All right, let's look at some information for your next quiz. That'll be this Friday. The, what would the date be? Today's 28th, 29, 30, 31, something like the 3rd. Oh, the 31st, that's it. Okay, but first I wanted to review replication just for a minute. And basically, in, with the exception of which bases were in your strand, your answer to your question should have looked something like this. The question from Quiz 3, Part 2. Let me see. Okay, so you were to start with a single strand of DNA, which I gave you, replicate its complementary strand, and then you would have this, okay, with the thymine base pairing with the adenine and the cytosine with the guanine. So a very simple thing to do to create a double-stranded molecule, well, simple here, not necessarily that simple in cells, but relatively simple thing to do, and um, you've got a double-stranded DNA molecule. Not very long, not realistic as far as the actual shape, but it does show the basic ladder shape here. The helix part would be the coiling. Okay, then to replicate it, you would split the two original strands, which I put in black. You would split those and then synthesize new DNA strands from each of those, making DNA replication semi-conservative. Each of the new double helices has part of the old and part of the new. And trust me, this is the only way it can happen before the semi-conservative nature of DNA replication was accepted. Other theories were looked at and the only way to get identical, two identical double helices would be to split the original double helix and build a new complementary strand for each of those sides that you split apart or were split apart. Okay? So this, and then I put new in blue to show again the semi-conservative nature of DNA replication. When we move to transcription of DNA, it's going to look a little different. Whoops, falling, gonna fall on me. Okay, I also wanted to show you this. Now, this will also relate to the cell cycle, um, but it relates to replication as well. We start with a parent cell. That's what we call it, a parent cell. And the parent cell, each of these lines represents a double-stranded DNA molecule. I just don't have room to draw them. So this is a double helix. This is a double helix, this is a double helix, this is a double helix. So each of those pictured here are double helices. Replication occurs and then there are two double helices that are attached to each other. In other words, something like this. And it's what we saw in our karyotypes. Okay, so replication has occurred. Now, in fact, for us, at this point, there are 92 double helices in our cells before mitosis and cell division. So then, mitosis and cell division happen, which we will talk about the cell cycle, very briefly about mitosis today, and then we'll really get into mitosis and meiosis next week. But, and I apologize for my really wimpy looking DNA strand. But after that, what we have are two daughter cells. Someone asked, hey, do you ever have son cells? No, we just, by convention, they're called daughter cells. So parent cell, two identical daughter cells. They're identical to each other. 
and identical to the parent, and this happens during uh, mitosis. We'll talk later about meiosis and how it's different. But notice that we're back to one double helix, another the double helix here, this one, this one, and this cell has all four of those double helices as well. So they're identical. So that's an important thing to know that you get that from replication and then cell division. Now I'm going to pull this over and answer a couple of questions. These would be left over and some of these will come back when we talk about genetics. Mutations. So there are quite a few questions about mutations. I was asked about cystic fibrosis, or excuse me, about point mutations and how one, one single change in the DNA, one base, nitrogen base, could be such a problem, could cause death. Well, cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia are both examples of what we call point mutations. One, one base is different, and in this case, these two cases, the protein is different because of that. Because a different amino acid is put in place from the normal or non-mutated strain. So with cystic fibrosis, it is... Cystic fibrosis is caused by an inability to transport chloride properly into and out of cells. So, it's a chloride, it, the gene is for a chloride transport protein that's part of the cell membrane. Remember we talked about cells and transport. So we have this chloride transport protein. And we have the normal chloride transport protein that moves chloride appropriately. Then there's an abnormal form, a mutated form, where there's one base pair different and thus one amino acid is different. And we get a protein that doesn't properly move the chloride into and out of the cells and as a result the person has the symptoms associated with cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is still a very serious disease. Uh, treatments are better. They now do uh, lung transplants sometimes. So there are better therapies for people and they are living longer. But in my lifetime, when I was in my early 20s, the person who had lived the longest with cystic fibrosis did not live to be 20 years old. So it was a lethal mutation, although not lethal at birth, but lethal in that it caused a premature death. It's much better now, and hopefully treatments will continue. That also brings up, uh, you know, someone asked about, well, you know, fixing these things. Well, we'll talk, I'll have you do a discussion on gene therapy so that you can learn a little more about the potential to fix this cystic fibrosis. And sickle cell anemia is also where there's one base that's different and then one amino acid and it makes a different hemoglobin. And what makes sickle cell anemia is that the person only has hemoglobin S. This will come up in genetics. You may not remember this at this point, but they're homozygous recessive. So they have two alleles. Well, it's not really recessive. I'll have to explain that later. But they'll have two alleles. What they get from their parents, both make the hemoglobin S. All they have is hemoglobin S, and hemoglobin S does not carry oxygen the way that normal or hemoglobin A does. Someone asked about the rates of errors in replication. Don't worry about these numbers, but in prokaryotes overall, one in a hundred million to one in one billion. You can look this up if you want to know more about it. And there's a certain error-prone region in eukaryotes on one of the 
pieces of chromatin associated with a chromosome where it's 1 in 100 to 1 in 1,000. So, um, now, some, a lot of times DNA repair will occur. You don't always get a persistent mutation because it's fixed. But, uh, yes, errors do occur. These spontaneous errors occur. And then, some of you were really interested in that uh, the one-eyed sheep, which is an example of slack cyclopia. So, like Cyclops, one eye. Um, one of the questions said, okay, so you've got these one-eyed sheep. Are there any three-eyed uh, mutations? And I do not know if it's a genetic mutation or if an error occurs during development. But yeah, I found a picture of a snake with three eyes, a picture of a fish with three eyes, and it wasn't even the fish from The Simpsons. It was a uh, catfish. So, yes, there are three odd uh, organisms that do appear. But I want to go back to cyclo cyclopia. I've got, I'm going to set this down for a minute so I don't break my foot. So, cyclopia with the sheep is related to what's called a teratogen. A teratogen is like a mutagen, except that it affects offspring. So the female, the ewes, would eat this particular plant that had a lot of this chemical in it, which would then cause a, it would then cause a, um, a change in a gene in the offspring and they have one eye. Someone asked, hey, does this occur in other organisms? The answer is yes, it can occur in other organisms and in some of those it's not from eating this particular plant that contains this teratogen, but just some error that occurs during the development of the embryo. And sadly, it even occurs in humans. And what I read about it was that this type that occurs during, due to mistakes during development, it's not just the, the, uh, the individual doesn't just have one eye, but there are many other problems with the brain. And here's how it was written. It is not compatible with life. So the cyclopia has multiple causes and it does occur in other organisms. Um, I, there was a, a baby goat, and I'm guessing that I saw a picture of, I'm guessing that the goat, which wasn't dead, was probably more like the sheep, where it was this teratogen that the female, the mother, had eaten during development. Okay, I'm gonna put this back up. Actually, let's stop this one because my videos are long and they break up anyway.